Are we just specks in an infinite void? Is there a limit to the universe? And if so, what lies beyond it? For ages, scientists have been perplexed by these questions. But as technology advances and our understanding of the cosmos deepens, we may finally be able to answer these age-old questions. Join us as we explore the secrets of the cosmos, including the possibility that all that exists is a simulation. Buckle up, because we're about to go on a mind-bending adventure into the unknown. Before we explain anything about the universe, the first question comes is, does the universe have an edge? Is there an advantage to the universe? One of the most perplexing topics in cosmology is whether or not our universe has an edge. Would you ever reach a point where you couldn't go any farther if you kept traveling across space in an imaginary faster-than-light spaceship? And if there is an edge to the universe, what is beyond it? It's all really difficult to imagine. However, an infinite universe is equally difficult to comprehend. After all, space must be expanding into something, right? Let us begin with a related but simpler concept. Our universe has an apparent edge known as the cosmic horizon. The light emitted immediately after the Big Bang has been traveling through space for 13.8 billion years. This indicates that we can only observe the universe up to the present distance of 13.8 billion years in light travel time. This so-called co-moving distance is around 45 billion light years due to the expansion of space and anything beyond this limit is unobservable to us since not enough time has passed since the formation of the universe for light from these remote places to reach our telescopes. This cosmic horizon, like the conventional horizon seen by sailors on the sea, is not a real physical barrier. And, just as the ocean stretches beyond the horizon of a sailor, so does space beyond our observable universe. There's no reason galaxies couldn't exist at such great distances. They're just invisible to us, no matter how good our telescopes are. However, Knowing that the universe extends beyond 45 billion light-years does not inform us whether it is finite or infinite. One thing is certain, the universe does not have an advantage. There is no physical barrier, no wall, border, or fence around the cosmos's edges. However, this does not imply that the universe is indefinitely huge. In theory, we may live in a finite universe if three-dimensional empty space is geometrically curved in a specific way, a distinct possibility according to Albert Einstein's general theory of relativity. If the universe has positive curvature, it would be like the curved surface of a beach ball, but instead of a 2D surface, it would be 3D space. It is finite. If you lived in this flattened version of the cosmos, you wouldn't need an unlimited amount of paint to cover your 2D universe, yet the surface itself has no border or edge. A negatively curved universe, on the other hand, would be a higher dimensional version of a Pringle, curving upwards along one axis and downwards along the other, whereas a flat universe would seem like a piece of paper. Both of these variations would be endlessly long. Over the last few decades, Cosmologists have attempted to quantify the large-scale curvature of space, and the most recent data, together with theoretical reasons, appear to show that we live in a geometrically flat universe. On the one hand, this is convenient because our brains aren't very adept at conceptualizing large-scale space curvature. We've had to express our 3D universe in 2D terms even here. On the other side, this implies that our universe is endlessly enormous and that our observable universe, the portion within our cosmological horizon, is only a fragment of an unimaginably large total. Return to our 2D analogy if you're curious about how our endless, unlimited universe can expand. If you notice that the grid size on a piece of graph paper was increasing, you could reasonably conclude that the paper is expanding. Even if the piece of paper was so enormous that you couldn't see the edge, you'd get the same conclusion even if the piece of paper might be infinitely large. The same can be said for an infinite universe. After all, infinitely multiplied by two equals infinity. Our universe began approximately 13.75 billion years ago. Soon after, primordial light began to shoot across the cosmos and spread throughout the early universe. At this point, the cosmos was also expanding. The expansion of the universe slowed after the initial burst, but the pace of expansion has been slowly increasing since then due to the effect of dark energy. Essentially, the universe has been expanding at an exponential rate from its inception. According to cosmologists, the earliest photons that we can witness have traveled 45 to 47 billion light years since the Big Bang. That indicates our observable universe is about 93 billion light years across. These 93 billion light years contain all of the quarks, quasars, stars, planets, nebulae, black holes, and other objects that we might potentially view. Nevertheless, the observable universe only contains light that has had time to reach us. There is a lot more to the universe than what we can see, 
and much of it has been made possible by the discoveries made by the James Webb Telescope since its inception. If the universe is just 13.8 billion years old, how can it be 93 billion light years across? Light hasn't had time to travel that far. Finally, understanding this aspect of physics is the key to comprehending what lies beyond the boundary of the observable universe and if we will ever get there. To put it another way, according to special relativity, objects that are close together cannot move faster than the speed of light in relation to one another. But there is no such law for objects that are extremely distant from one another when the distance between them is growing. In brief, it's not that objects are flying faster than the speed of light, but that the space between them is expanding, causing them to fly apart at incredible speeds. This ultimately means that we will only be able to reach the edge of the observable universe if we develop a method of transport that allows us to either travel faster than the speed of light, which most physicists believe is impossible, or transcend space-time via wormholes or warp drive, both of which most physicists believe is also impossible. The entire universe, according to the theory of cosmic inflation, is at least 1,023 times larger than the observable cosmos. That's a lot of cosmos we're missing out on. So what are we exactly missing? What exists beyond the observable universe? Unfortunately, we don't know what lies beyond the observable cosmos because we can't see or measure it. We do, however, have some theories about what exists in the immense unknown. Despite its strangeness, this first concept is one of the simplest to grasp. Astronomers believe that space outside of the observable universe could be a limitless expanse of what we see in the cosmos around us, dispersed similarly to what we see in the observable universe. This appears to be logical. After all, it doesn't make logical for one part of the cosmos to be distinct from the rest. And honestly, who can imagine a cosmos with an end? A massive brick wall lying on the horizon? In that sense, infinity makes sense. But infinity implies that there will be more planets, stars, and other forms of matter beyond the observable cosmos. You will ultimately discover everything possible. That means, if this is true and we follow it to its logical conclusion, there is another person out there who is identical to you in every way, and there is also a you who is only slightly different from you in every way one is an inch shorter, one was hit by a bus five years ago and died, one has a missing finger, and so on. This other you may even be seeing this video right now. The only difference is that they just picked their nose while you didn't. This idea appears implausible. However, infinity is very inconceivable. Another notion is concerned with dark flow. Astronomers discovered something weird and surprising in 2008. Galaxy clusters were all traveling in the same direction at incredible speeds, exceeding 2 million miles per hour. Massive structures outside the observable universe that exert gravitational effect are one proposed explanation. The structures themselves might be anything, astonishingly massive accumulations of matter and energy, or even weird warps in space-time that funnel gravitational forces from other universes. We have no idea what these enormous objects could be. Notably, recent research claimed to refute the dark flow hypothesis, but this assertion is still being contested. Another possibility is a universe of universes. Some believe that our cosmos could live in a small bubble among a wide array of other bubbles. Theorists refer to this as a multiverse. Surprisingly, the theory proposes that these parallel universes can collide, gravity can flow between them, and when they do, a Big Bang similar to the one that produced our universe may occur. These are only a few examples of common hypotheses. But here lies the main question. Are we living in a computer simulation, and can we hack it? According to a common cosmological theory, the universe operates on quantum codes. So how difficult could it be to fine-tune the supreme algorithm? What would you change if you could change the laws of nature? Perhaps it's that pesky speed of light limit on cosmic travel, not to mention the war, pestilence, and the inevitable asteroid bearing Earth's name. Maybe you'd like to be able to go back in time and tell your adolescent self how to deal with her parents or to buy Google stock. Couldn't the universe benefit from a few tweaks? That was the query that David Anderson, a computer scientist, SETI enthusiast, musician, and mathematician at the University of California, Berkeley, recently posed to his colleagues and friends. The idea that our universe, including ourselves and all of our innermost ideas, is a computer simulation operating on a cosmic thinking machine has pervaded culture at all levels in recent years. Nick Bostrom, a philosopher at the University of Oxford and director of the Institute for the Future of Humanity, proposed the idea in an influential essay in 2003, adding that it was probably an easy accomplishment for technologically mature civilizations wanting to explore their histories or entertain their offspring. 
Dr. Anderson began exploring the consequences of this theory with his teenage son a few years ago, when he was tied down by the coronavirus outbreak. If everything was a simulation, then making improvements would be as simple as changing the software that was running everything. He reasoned that if the software was adequately written, tweaking it should be simple. Modifications may alter our physical laws or add new features to the universe. Menu options, speed filters, closed captioning, pop-up blockers, buttons to press that would make our lives richer or more enjoyable. Furthermore, if the software that runs the universe is open source, publicly available for other programmers to inspect and manipulate, these meta-hackers may be open to our feature requests and may even be looking for them. As simple as these requests may appear, Dr. Anderson cautioned that implementing them may necessitate a significant amount of computational engineering behind the scenes. For example, briefly pausing the universe to gather your thoughts would necessitate branching your own life into a temporary parallel simulation. Then, once you knew what you wanted to say, you could hit the escape key and return to the original simulation. Dr. Anderson explained that rewinding to rectify the past would likewise cause the simulation to branch, but in this scenario, you would continue in the parallel simulation and never hit escape. Naturally, he said, the usual time travel weirdness applies. Stepping into the future and returning would imbue your current self with memories of events that had not yet occurred. This in turn would alter the future so that when you arrived, it would be different from what you remembered from your first visit. A popular modification is what Dr. Anderson refers to as the look of death, the ultimate expression of road rage. He said, it's a safe bet that someone would give me the look of death within a day or two, he writes, and nearly all drivers would be incinerated within a few weeks. So it's probably better to design this in such a way that each look of death forks a new reality, in which the specified incineration occurs, but the old universe remains unchanged. The year 2023 is still young. There's still time to negotiate a better deal with cosmic hackers, so watch out what happens. Thanks for joining us on this cosmic adventure. If you want to keep discovering the wonders of the cosmos, don't forget to subscribe and turn on notifications for our channel.